Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. Thank you so much to Brianna Raquel, who is here to join me on The Sarah Scoop Show today. This is going to be so fun. You've got a lot of exciting things that you've done, and we're excited to hear from you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, first of all, you do a lot. You do acting, singing, songwriting. How did you get started? Oh, man. Um, I've actually been singing since I was five years old, and I just started in voice lessons and have been singing my entire life. I started songwriting when I was about... 14 I think and I was like I really want to start making music and writing my own songs and stuff I started going to the studio and like doing covers and I kind of eased into it and stuff mm -hmm. So just kind of like having a little songbook and writing down songs and so that's how I got started with the songwriting But I didn't get started started in acting until I was like Actually younger 12 maybe Maybe <laughs> I'm like when 11 yeah, I started doing commercial work in New York, so that's how that kind of started, and then I got this Nickelodeon project, and so I moved to LA to pursue both, because I was like, well, this is kind of the hub of entertainment industry, so it makes sense to move. And do you feel like that move to LA was really beneficial for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've just been surrounded by the industry and so many creative people that I can just like grow and be who I am there. The project you did was High School Musical Nation. Yeah, yeah, High School Nation. It's a mm -hmm. um, pretty much a tour and we go around to different high schools and it's a really great program because they donate a, a studio to the school that we go to and you get to perform for all the kids. It's super fun. There's a lot of sponsors, a lot of great performers. It was really fun. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I saw on your Instagram some fun things like people were just really excited. It looks like an awesome program. Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, especially for the kids. It was great to see all of them smiling and stuff because I would have loved if something like that happened at my school. So another thing we have to talk about that you did was Criminal Minds. How yeah. cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that was probably one of the best weeks of my life was shooting that because I've always been a fan of the show. And so mm -hmm. being a part of it was like so surreal. And then one of the characters, Reed, his name is Matthew Gray Goobler. He directed the episode. So it was pretty much a dream come true. How did that come about for you? Oh man, I remember the audition process. I went in, I got the script and was like, oh wow, okay, my agent sent it to me. And I was like, oh wow, I really love this script. But I was auditioning for a different role at first. And so I went in and then they were like, we want you to do this role. And I was like, okay. So I did that one. And then we went to like the director session and I got to work with him directly and I got it. And we just had a lot of fun on set and I met some friends and stuff that I'm still friends with today. So yeah, you had your role was not the nicest person. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. But that was definitely the fun part of it because of the whole twist so, <laughs> yeah, it was very deceiving at first because it's all like sweet, innocent, and then I'm like, turn around and I'm not the nicest. It um, must have been a fun role to get to play oh, that. Oh, it so was. It so was. Especially some of the scenes where I was like climbing up on things and, you know, people didn't necessarily know who I was talking to, but I obviously I did. So, yeah, it was really fun to be like the mystery aspect of that episode. Yeah, and so Criminal Minds, I mean, that's an iconic show. How did you feel getting to be cast as one of the oh my gosh. people on the episode? So lucky, honestly. There were so many girls there, and I was just like, Whew, okay, I was so nervous, too. And it was definitely one of those roles that demands a lot of emotion and stuff. And so I was like, all right, I got to get in the right, mi the right mindset and listen to my music and stuff and just totally be available to be vulnerable and stuff and so I felt really lucky that they went with me I was really happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's awesome I was watching your episode previously and I was like she's oh, thank so you sweet. and then you got this fun little right <laughs> side twist <laughs> little um, dark side yeah so now you've also been a part of seal I'd love to hear about your role there as well yeah, so I'm actually the best friend of Emma Hayes, which is the main character's daughter. And so we've grown up together. Both of our dads are on the SEAL team. And I was, I'm, I came in for 
her mom's funeral and stuff, which was the introduction of my character. Mm -hmm. And I did two more episodes after that when we were just kind of talking about college and the death of my dad, actually, which was <laughs> which was sad because I was like, oh my god, oh, our parents are dying. <laughs> But no, it was really fun. Uh, the girl, Carrie, who plays Emma, we are, we act, funny story, we both did High School Nation together and I didn't know that she'd be on it. So that was interesting to work on two projects with her. But no, it was really cool, a super professional set. I just learned a lot from watching all the actors and stuff and just seeing how everything works is just like so awesome. <laughs> And so that was a reoccurring role then. Mm -hmm. So what was it like then going on to this show mm -hmm. often and just like getting to be a part of something that is so national and such a big show? Yeah, honestly, it was it was really cool. I was super nervous for that too, just because it has such a different feel from all the other projects I was doing. Um, so I was like a little bit nervous. I was like, oh man, I don't know how it's gonna feel. Like, what is the vibe of the set and stuff? So, but it was super smooth. Like those people are professional and I just feel so lucky to be a part of like, just that whole experience was like such a great learning experience for me. And I was like, oh, I'm getting all this information. I gotta keep it, put it down in my notebook and stuff. But yeah, it was really cool to meet all the nice and professional actors and stuff that I was like, yeah, this is definitely what I wanna do. And being able to do these different roles at such a young age, I mean, you even said you started writing songs and doing acting mm -hmm. when you were in your preteens. How mm -hmm. do you keep this, like, confidence that you have? Oh, man, it's so hard because being in this industry, you hear a lot of no's and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I definitely go through different parts where I'm like, oh, my God, like, I really wanted that role. I didn't get it, blah, blah, blah. But knowing that you even got in the room mm -hmm. is something you just really have to be grateful for. Cause it's like, wow, they picked me to come in and do what I love out of, I don't even know how many other people. So, I mean, I really, I really try to be positive and focus on that instead of like the roles I don't get. I'm like, well, at least I went in and met that casting director. So mm -hmm. that's something. That's a really good outlook because a lot of people want to get into the industry and they might hear a few no's and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't have it. But yeah. the yeah. more that I hear from people like you, it's like you hear a lot of no's before you get that yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, even if you have worked before, you still hear no's with more projects and stuff. And you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is important for teenagers or younger people to know going into the industry? It's definitely a marathon and not a race. So, ugh, man, and I say that because it's like when I first went in, I was like, oh, I'm totally going to be in a movie in like probably a couple months. <laughs> and that is not what happened. And people have <laughs> this idea of like Hollywood and being in LA and stuff. And it's completely different when you're actually there. Just keep learning, keep taking in as much information as possible and stuff. And then just oh, look at the bright side. There's always a bright side. If you didn't get that role, maybe because there's a bigger one for you that you're meant to do. So that's what I would say. Just be persistent. If you love it, do what you love. That's some great advice. And you can quite a few people that are following you. What do you want to say to your followers that are following and supporting you on your journey? I want to say I appreciate it so much. It, it seriously makes me so happy to know that I can like reach other people and inspire people to do what they love. Because I mean, when I was, you know, not really doing this, I was looking at Ariana Grande and Selena Gomez. I was also looking at the Disney stars of my time as I was younger, but and I was just like, man, I just want to do that. And to be someone like that for another person, mm -hmm. that's all that matters. So I really appreciate when people reach out to me or comment and interact and stuff. And it just really means a lot. So and thank you. <laughs> yeah. What does a typical day look like for you when you do have auditions? Because you still are right. young and I'm sure you have kind of a balance with your life. Oh, yeah. I mean, the act of a, <laughs> the act, the life of an actor is so crazy. I mean, you can have one week when you're, week is just filled with auditions and then a dry week and you're just sitting and you're like okay cool but no I mean it could be as busy as like I have three auditions in one day and I just have to 
drive everywhere in LA through that traffic and <laughs> get there and just go in and do what I love and stuff. It really depends, honestly, on if I get an audition or something and a lot of them are like, oh, next day. So I'm like, I'm changing my schedule constantly and I'm like, no, that's out because I have an audition. So my planner is like crazy. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's just about being on your toes, being ready and kind of like, it's kind of like being a doctor when you're like, when they call, you better be ready. You gotta go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of hard. Right. It's kind of hard to pinpoint like a specific day to an actor unless you're filming and then you get up and you go to your call time and have rehearsal and makeup and hair and stuff. So what's yeah. something that you learned after you did get one of these roles on these big shows? Like what's something that you learned from getting in that position that you really didn't know before? How quickly everything works. It seems like we, we take our time, but that is not the case. Like, we don't have time to mess around. It's like production's like, all right, go back to one, let's do another take. And you're like, oh, okay. And for a five minute scene, you could be there for an hour doing it. Like standing there, go back to one. If you have to cry, you better cry again. It's, it's honestly like you do it over and over until people are satisfied and you're satisfied and then you can move on. It's not just like, oh yeah, well, I did that scene in one take, which is a, a lot of the time is the case. Usually it's a lot more standing around and then, <laughs> and then going to set and stuff. And then you're like, okay, now it's my time to perform. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. um, so Brianna, what can we expect to see from you in the future? I do have a commercial coming out with Xfinity. It's super hilarious. So I'm, I'm on the lookout for that one. I can't wait to see it. And then I'm releasing a single in May. So I'm super, super excited about that. It's probably my most favorite single I've ever done. So I'm really excited to share that with everyone. <laughs> yeah, where can we hear the single at? Yeah, so when it comes out, you can hear it on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, pretty much every streaming platform that you use, it'll be on there. So Awesome. We'll have to have you come back and talk to us about the single because I know you yes. can't really care much about it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I would love to. That was so great. Thank you so much. You've given us really an inside look on what it's like to – inner Hollywood and uh, yeah. thank you so much for all of that we are all rooting for your success and can't wait to see what the future holds <laughs> for you thank you so much thank you for having me I love talking to people and stuff and just sharing what it's like so and where can people find you online oh right okay so Instagram at Brianna Raquel is pretty much my handle for all social media platforms I'm mostly on Instagram and TikTok. I do a lot of covers on TikTok. So um, go check those out if you're interested. But I am, I spend most of my time on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. Well, I know people will be following along and watching your journey. So we can't wait to see more of you in the future. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching The Sarah Scoop Show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.